the, the, vo the negative voice and the chatter doesn't go away and you have to learn to stop listening to the outside influences because our own chatter is so loud and it never goes away. We just get better and better at managing those conversations. I mean, human nature uh, has fear. Uh, I, I, I believe fear is learned though. Uh, fear is just an emotion. Everybody knows what they want. Everybody knows what they want. Yeah. Not everybody knows what they're willing to sacrifice. And there's a difference between knowing what you want and showing up and sacrificing what needs to be sacrificed in order to accomplish that goal. Oh my goodness, I am so excited. Today's guest completed 50 Ironmans in 50 states in 50 days. He has a slew of Guinness World Records and is setting out to help you and me and the whole world redefine what impossible actually is. Now, if you've ever felt like you've not come close to your potential, or you see how hard other people are pushing and you just don't feel like you have the same energy or the same drive, or like, honestly, maybe you just worry a lot about what other people think and say. If any of that's the case, this episode's for you, because I talk about all of that and a whole lot more with this week's guest, James, the Iron Cowboy Lawrence. Welcome to the We Do Hard Things podcast. Like the level of stuff that, that people like you do is so next level. And the whole reason for this podcast is, is for me to try and figure out how do you get there? And so the, the question I have for you to start with is, um, you know, you didn't start out so aggressively hardcore, I imagine. Is, is that right? Like, did you inch your way up to it or were you always pretty? Uh, uh, no, absolutely. Aggressive? That is the biggest message. Um, I, I've spoken around the world. I mean, 48 different countries, hundreds of stages. And one of my big messages is that everybody's hard is different. And it's okay to be where you're at on your journey as long as you're on a journey. Hmm. And uh, a lot of people don't know this about my journey is because they only see the headline or the book or the documentary, but realize that my journey started with a four mile fun run that I struggled to get through. And I got up off the couch and I did it with my wife and I got destroyed. And then my first triathlon I ever did was in a pool. I couldn't swim. There's literally a picture of me hanging off the side of the pool, gasping for air with a nose plug on. And nobody would have said, oh, that guy is going to go on to set endurance history. You know, and so look, everybody realize that you have to start somewhere. And then the secret to success is doing a lot of little things consistently over a long period of time. You're not going to break a world record this year if you're just getting up off the couch. You're not going to lose the 100 pounds, 50 pounds you need to lose this week. It's a journey and it's a process. And everybody's always waiting. I will be happy when I get to. I will. No, dude, be happy right now and just accept where you're at and progress every single day. I love to say show up and, and attack things with relentless pursuit. And, and, and enjoy the, the moment and be present. And that's what this is all about. Like, I've got some big, big challenges next year, but I'm not like, I'm not looking f uh, that far ahead to that challenge. I'm like, oh, dude, tomorrow I get to go crush 140 miles in the beautiful mountains of Utah and I get to do 19,000 feet of climbing. Like, that's where I'm at in my journey and in my preparation. Right. And like that, I'm going to go enjoy that tomorrow. Why would I look past that? and miss out on that piece of the progress and the piece of the journey, right? That, that's what people need to realize. Everybody's heart is different. You need to start tomorrow or right now and shed every ounce of excuse and entitlement that's in your body because it's not serving you at all. And when, if you had to reflect, um, you know, so let's, let's go back to, Iron Cowboy before he's Iron Cowboy. James, you know, at the edge of the pool, uh, you know, gasping for air, getting your, your ass handed to you. Um, and today, while you may have, you know, done more things and matured in certain aspects, skill sets, aspects of your life, are you the same person? Are you a different person? Uh, or, or is that core of you? You know, like I feel like everybody has something to prove for me, I, I never feel good enough. Like no matter how much I do, 
my wife just has to say something in passing and it just reminds me, yeah, I didn't do that good enough. Didn't do a good enough job. Didn't do that right. You know, I, I should be better. And so I find no matter how much I grow and mature, there's still just these core parts of me that I'm always fighting every day. Do you, have you been able to break through past that or do you still have like, is, is this, is this our story for, for everybody? I, I, I think it's, it's, it's the journey that everybody's on. And I hope I'm a different person than I was 12 years ago because I've had experiences, I've grown, I've changed, and hopefully I'm learning lessons along the way. And we all have to continue to have experiences and learn lessons and grow. And what your, your new normal just changes mm. um, because when you're in the middle of something, it's absolutely the hardest thing you can conceptualize because you're in the middle of it and you, you're still growing in that process. When I broke the world record for the most half Ironmans in a year, that was the hardest thing I had ever done. Well, dude, it's silly to me now based on what I've done post that, but I couldn't conceptualize anything past that because I didn't have the knowledge or experience at that point. And so, when you're in the middle of it, when you're in the thick of it, like people right now in lockdown, in quarantine, in 2020, like this is the hardest thing that a lot of people have gone through. And they're, go trust me, you're going to survive if you continue to show up. And you're going to get through this and you're going to look back and go, oh, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was, even though it was the hardest thing ever in the moment. But now you've, you've grown, you've changed, you've, you've gained knowledge and experience and you're a different person. So I hope I'm not the same person as I was then because I've had so many experiences and I continue to push that envelope and the new normal just changes. My, my new normal is different than somebody else's, but that's okay because everybody's heart is different and we're all on our own unique journey and wherever we are today is okay. As, as long as, as long as you're not being complacent and just sitting there and mm. I'm taking like excuses like, oh, the, this is the raw hand that I was dealt, man. I don't have time for any of that noise, right? Like it, you were not dealt a raw hand. You're choosing to react to your hand a, in a negative, non-productive way. Mm. Mm. Does that make sense? Uh, it a hundred percent does. My, my, my greatest fear. Is, so, so I, I, I've learned so much about myself on the treadmill. And, um, and then, you know, I lost my gym cause it closed down up here. You know, I'm up here in Canada, it closed down during COVID. What and part I'm, of Canada are you at? Uh, I'm, I just outside of Toronto. Okay. I grew up in Calgary. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, very different part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we still the uh, North though, right? Yeah. Hey, we the North. Exactly. There you go. Um, go Raptors. The Raptors are out. Oh, yeah. They're anyway. out. They're out. They're out. Go, they're go out. Lake, go Lake show. There you go. So, uh, you know, and then, so then it's, it's, it's March, whatever the first week of March and I go like, or middle of March and I'm like, well, I can do this. I can run outside. I can learn. And, and, and so I've, I've learned a lot about myself, you know, going like, I don't think I could do this. And then you do, and you feel great. Um, I don't think I have it. And then, you, and then you push through and you do, and you feel great. I, I have trouble transferring these things to the other areas of my life. Like just because I can prove to myself in one area of my life that, that I'm stronger than I think I am, that I'm capable of more than I think I am, that I can get by on less sleep than I think, or if I'm not feeling well, I could still push through or whatever it is, all the soft things of life um, where everyone else gives a free pass. Everyone else will give you a free pass and say, your tummy hurts. Take it easy this afternoon. You didn't sleep well, go for a nap right off the day. I have trouble transferring these lessons to the other areas of my life because I still bump up against these other things. Have you been able to take what you've learned, you know, doing 30, 30 Ironmans, doing 50 Ironmans, doing eco challenge, doing all of these things that you've done, have you been able to transfer them to other areas of your life or do you still bump up against the same things that we all do? Well, we all go through life and we all have to learn the same lessons and people wonder why the same crap keeps happening to them. And it's because they're not conscious. They're not internalizing. They're not doing a, a, a real difficult self audit on themselves frequently to learn the lessons, push forward and keep moving. And yeah, you know, I, I'm absolutely human and I bump my head against the same wall multiple times until I'm like, ah, that really hurts. I should probably stop doing that. Um, and, and it is, I mean, there's core principles of, of what we do with our endurance racing and, I mean, it is all surrounded around mindset and that piece of the puzzle, that mindset component can be transferred over into almost any area of your life. Because guys, I get, 
life is hard. You're not the only person out there with a difficult life. We, life sucks for a lot of people, even the people that are at the highest level. I learned this lesson when I went and spoke for um, some NFL teams. I spoke to the Minnesota Vikings, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and the Bengals. And it was crazy to me at the highest level. Like these guys got a hundred million dollar contract. And the, the, ultimately what I've learned about speaking around the world is that humans, adults, we're getting in our own way and we're toughest on ourselves. And it, it's the conversations that we're having right here. And the, the, vo- the negative voice and the chatter doesn't go away. And you have to learn to stop listening to the outside influences because our own chatter is so loud. And it never goes away. We just get better and better at managing those conversations. And that is through learning and chalking, you know, marking up little wins, little wins, little wins. We're going to lose. Hopefully you learn, lose, lose, win, 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 right? And when you look back on life, you want to go, man, I have more wins than I do losses. And I've really learned to manage that conversation in my head. And that conversation in your head, to go back to your question, relates to every aspect of your life, whether it's parenting, whether it's relationships, whether it's doing hard things, whether it's in business, whether all of those things, if you can learn to manage the conversation in your head, the bully dude, and block out all of the negative outside influences that are coming in, you're going to win in every category in your life, right? Because now you're learning to focus and put your attention on what you can control, what's right in front of you. That's the secret to success. So, the only way to do that is have experiences. That's how you learn. That's how you grow because you stay safe and comfortable and soft and cushy. And that voice isn't going to start to bully you. You, 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 you seclude yourself and be recluse and depressed. You're going to amplify those emotions and, and, and you're going to, you're going to protect yourself from the outside influences. You're not going to gain the experience to be able to win those conversations. And so it's important to get out there to make yourself vulnerable to, to, try new things. I, I, I wouldn't have known that I loved wrestling. I wouldn't have known that I loved golf. I wouldn't have known that I loved triathlon had I gone out and tried to experience. Dude, I fell in love with adventure racing, man. What a cool friggin' sport. That beat the crap out of me, but I loved it. And I've applied to do season two in Patagonia. Ah. Dude, it, was a, it was crazy, crazy, hella hard. Why would I go do that again? Cause I'm learning and growing and I would have known I had a passion for it if I didn't dip my toe in that water. Right. Well, I, I, I loved So I loved eco challenge with, which you were just mentioning in, in Fiji Um, back, back in like 2002 or 2003, whenever they did the last one, I remember watching it on. Oh, one Oh two. Yeah. Whatever, you know, I was watching the amazing race and survivor and reality TV was a big thing back then. Um, And there was no internet really. So everybody watched TV and then to, to see it come to Amazon and to watch the story. I mean, just like, we only got, you know, whatever, whatever it's eight episodes or something. So we have a little sliver of just the hell that, that you guys had to work through and deal with. Um, oh, it's crazy. The, the, I mean, 10 episodes on prime, they did an unbelievable job of editing it um, and trying to showcase the, the difficulty of it. But man, you, you cannot convey what it's like to, I mean, to stand on the Billy Billies for 12 hours. Like they say, hey, you're on a Billy Billy. For... No, to stand ankle deep in water, given a paddle that does is useless to you on a non-moving river for 12 hours in the middle of the night, you can't convey what that looks and feels like in an episode. And and the, yeah, just the hours and hours of mud and the, the exhaustion and the hunger. And well, you, you just can't get a sense of what it's truly like unless you're out there. And they did a great job editing it. And I, I applaud the crew, but it's just so hard to convey um, what really went on out there. Well, and, and, and even, if they, even if they somehow could, they would never be able to share truly what's happening in your mind. You know, the self-talk, the, the doubt, like the highs could never be like the adrenaline rush could never be captured. The doubt could never be captured. The pain, the boredom, what you, you you would have to, whatever it is, right. You would have to do a behind the scenes where a camera crew exclusively shot one team from start to finish and then tell that story. Right. (laughs) That would be a different, that's a different show. Right. Cause now you're showing, the the mindset the intricacies between four teammates the tack the camp life the transitions the food the equipment um, and then trying to get into those conversations that are going on between each of the 
each inside each of the heads of each of the four members and the dialogue between the four of them. I mean, you had 67 teams out there from 30 countries and a handful of them got featured. And then you've got to divide the time up between that handful. And even then you're barely getting a glimpse of what, what really happens out there in the emotion that, that, and what it, what it takes. Um, it is just, just, a, just a tough, tough. I mean, it's called the world's toughest race for a reason. It's brutal. Well, I, and, I, 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 and I'm so excited to, to maybe do it again. That's the crazy <laughs> part. Like what the hell's wrong with us? Well, that's what I wanted to ask. So, so um, I don't know if that's the hardest thing you've ever done or not, but what is it that you're telling yourself? What is it like? I would have just, I mean, I know that there's the pressure of if you give up, your team gives up and there's your teammates. And so there's this, there's this weird dynamic of you not wanting to let other people down. So I imagine that pulls you through. There's times where you have these little wins and, and hopefully, you know, if you're having a loss, someone else on your team isn't, but you know, when you're doing 50 um, Ironmans in, in 50 days across 50 States, or when you're on the world's toughest race for eco challenge, or tomorrow when you're on this, this bike ride and you know, you're, you're, you, you've just hit 12,000 feet of, of incline that you've gone through or elevation change or whatever it is, what are you telling yourself to get through those moments of doubt? Um, and th there's highs and lows just on training days and it goes full circle about enjoying the journey. What's more exciting the le when you were a kid, the lead up to Christmas or Christmas day? What's more exciting, the the lead up to going to Disneyland or Disneyland itself, right? It's the it's that process, that journey to get there. I love the training. I love hanging out with the dudes. I love like that that's the whole part. And then when you're it's just the trying to be as present as you can on those long rides. I'm, I'm there's gonna be a moment on on the ride tomorrow where I'm like, what the what am I doing? Like, and then you have to like take a deep breath take a look around and go, Oh man, this is, this is beautiful. And this is something I get to do and realize that the opportunity that we get to, to do stuff like that. And, and that, like, that's my, that's my profession more or less. And I, I, I get to do that. And a lot of people don't have that same opportunity and it's more of a realization of the blessings in our lives that this is what we get to do. And how many people would want to be in our position that, that, that don't have that same opportunity. And so it always, everything should always circle back around to, to gratitude and the things that we get to do. I don't have to go on a 140 mile bike. Ride. I don't have to do eco challenge. I don't have, I get to do those things. And once you realize that you get to, it changes the mindset of when you're out there suffering and, and you don't have to suffer. Suffering's a choice. Where, where are you choosing to put your focus and attention? That, that's a choice that everybody has. 10% uh, of life is what happens to us. 90% is how you choose to react to it. So how are you choosing to react to the circumstances that you're currently in and experiencing? That's a, that's a choice that you get to have. You're not, you're, you haven't been dealt a raw hand. You have a choice to how you get to deal with the hand you've been given. Yeah. Create opportunities. Man, we live in an unbelievable day and age. 2020 may suck, but we live in an unbelievable time. And, and there's just a lot of whiny entitled people out there, man. I ain't got no time for it. I'm well, busy. I'm busy living. <laughs> it, it's, it seems that way. You know, I was just thinking as you were saying that, like, you know, when you were five, you didn't grow up and say, when I grow up, I'm going to be this. Right. You know, um, like just what a, and at the same time, you know, whether you're, uh, you know, a, a, a realtor or trying to run a business or parent or working at a company, whatever it is. Um, I think average people, average people, people like me or, you know, people who get up and drive to a job that they don't like to come home to a family that irritates them um, to live all life. choices. Like, they look at you as this, like you're living this adventurous, crazy life. You're cut from a different cloth. You're, you, you must've been born wealthy. You, <laughs> you have a supportive family, like, like you're living this thing, but, but really it's a spirit or like it's, it's um, you have these adventurous elements that, that we could bring into our lives as average people too. 
I'm an average person. I, I am middle America, no, dude. Not. I, I <laughs> you're not an average person. <laughs> I totally am average, dude. Look, I lost everything in the economy. I haven't made a paycheck since March. I the speaking world got shut down. Like I, my struggles are just like I wake up every single day going, man, I don't feel like working out today. Okay, talk to me about that. Yeah, I mean, I'm like just... I'm like up like eight pounds over the last mm, six weeks, maybe. And every time I look in the mirror, I was shaving today, getting ready for this. And I'm just looking at myself in the mirror and I'm going like, I know I could lose the eight pounds. Like, I know I could, right? I just get a little tighter with my uh, intermittent fasting, um, uh, you know, get a little bit more aggressive with my workouts. And, and I know within two or three weeks, I'll be back. And yet part of me is just like, eh. you know, it's just. Then you, 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 don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't want it bad enough, right? Everybody knows what they want. Everybody knows what they want. Yeah. Not everybody knows what they're willing to sacrifice. And there's a difference between knowing what you want and showing up and sacrificing what needs to be sacrificed in order to accomplish that goal. And, and, and you don't want it bad enough until you're willing to make those sacrifices. So you're okay with those eight pounds. You can't convince me otherwise until you do something about it and make the sacrifices required to do it. And that, that's the same choice that everybody else has. You can, you can look around and you can go to your work and be grumpy or you can go to your work and create value there. Or you also have the opportunity to go get a different job. You can create your own future. Your, your past doesn't dictate your future. If you're unhappy doing this thing, that you're choosing to be unhappy doing what you're doing. F find the joy in it. That's a thousand percent a choice. I cannot be convinced otherwise. You're choosing your own misery and you're surrounding yourself with people that are bringing you down. There's people out there that want to see you succeed. Find those people, join up with them and do something extraordinary. Everything else is a flat out excuse and I will not take it. I won't tolerate it. I can't handle it. I've seen both sides of it. I've seen the entitlement and the excuses and I've seen the other side of it where people have been dealt a total raw hand and have created something unbelievable from it. And, and that, therefore I can't be convinced otherwise because I, I, there's proof positive that you can be dealt the worst hand and create diamonds uh, out of just nothing. And I, I've seen people come from nothing to millionaires, but it takes time. Nothing happens overnight. And that's the back full circle. People aren't willing to sacrifice. Everybody, New Year's Eve, they know what they want. I want a better relationship. I want a better home. I wanted this new car. I want to lose these 15 pounds of this. I know what I want. I get it. We all know what you want because you've been saying it for 20 years. You don't want it bad enough because you haven't asked the right question. What am I willing to sacrifice? As soon as you say, what am I willing to fact sacrifice? Identify those things, write them out and go, okay, this, this, this write out the process what it's going to take i can't tell you how many people come to me and say hey, i want to do an iron man hey i want to do 10 iron mans hey i want to do this that great perfect let's lay out the game plan i show them the game plan they're like oh that's what it's going to take i'm out and i'm like okay, okay great that's why you're in the 99 percent of people that aren't willing to put in the work and make the sacrifices good for you keep living your life you're choosing it and, and so you, you titled the book redefine impossible why is that uh, because everybody said it was impossible, and I believe that as humans, we don't have limits. And I want to redefine what people perceive as impossible. And like we talked about at the beginning, everybody's heart is different, which means everybody's impossible is different. Mm -hmm. And so redefine your own version of impossible. I don't expect anybody to go attempt to do what I do or Goggins does or whatnot. We've been on a journey for a long time, right? That's a process. You're looking at a headline. So redefine impossible means push your limits. And like I said, show up every single day with relentless pursuit. That's the only way to win. The only way to guarantee you're going to lose is to not show up. You're guaranteed hundred percent of the time. I'll bet on that. Every time you don't show up, you're going to lose. And do you think the limit? I know that you're not a psychologist or anything, but in your experience, do no. you think the limitations that people bump up against the, the possible impossible, do you Lack think, of experience and knowledge. Okay, I was, I, that's where I was going with it. Do you think it's ours? Do you think, it's, do you think we, most people even take the time to, to, to prove to themselves what's possible or impossible? Or is it just, I look around, I see what other people say. You know, my aunt, when I was little, told me this, and therefore it's, it's defined. Yeah, I think people need to stop listening to outside influences, use others as benchmarks, and then blow through them. 
um, any journey starts with belief in thyself. Um, nobody else will believe in you until you believe in you. Um, I was flat out told by sponsors, we can't afford to associate ourselves with a failure. Okay, sweet. Phone rang afterwards and I told them no to go pound sand. You don't believe in me in the beginning. You don't get to be part of this ride. Mm -hmm. And so se belief and success in any journey has to start with you. Nobody's going to believe in you unless you believe in you and it, you have to emulate it. So, so I struggle. I mean, I, I struggle with that. Well, I, I've been running, I've been running a business for 14 years. I've, 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 I've been able to grow the business. I've seen contractions. I've seen lots of things. Uh, we've, we've had to pivot it obviously in the last year. Um, but the biggest challenge that, that I've always had as a leader, um, as a father, as a spouse, um, as people who have to connect with people is that um, I actually have um, this, I, I have a lack of belief in, in myself. I have an extreme confidence in my ability to figure something out if it's just me, but, but I, I, I don't have a huge belief um, that I could pull it off or that people will step up or that people will do it. And then that spills over to me not believing that other people can do. You know, if my son came to me and said, dad, I really want to achieve, I, I really want to do X. I, I wouldn't, I would say you can totally do that, but it's on you and it's not going to be easy. And I'm not sure if you realize how hard it's going to be. And like, I just, I don't, I don't pour out this like belief in people and, and it stems from my, my lack of, of belief in myself. How do you fix me? <laughs> Essentially. I, I don't fix you. Um, <laughs> success, success breeds, com, uh, success breeds success. Confidence breeds confidence. And when people have a fear and have anxiety and it's holding them back, they have, they have to start accumulating little tiny wins. Mm. And, and that's how you build momentum. And it's again, through showing up and having experiences, that's how, that's how you progress. And, what happens is, is people set a big goal. Their time frame is unrealistic and when they're going to achieve it, they're not patient. And then they ultimately fail because of lack of preparation effort. Um, and they're not giving the, uh, the goal, the time respect that it deserves in order for them to be successful. I fail hard in preparation. I push the boundaries in my prep so that, I going into a big challenge, I'm 300% confident it's going to happen because I've sure, already. Sure. So what does that mean or look like? You mean when you, when you fail hard, like, like you'll run until your legs can't support you just so you can, so, you know, during the race, you'll be able to run that far. Or what, what do you mean? Uh, j just testing different things that work or don't work equipment, nutrition, uh, pace, uh, programming, uh, team, um, conversations, fail in every aspect of the planning process and push the envelope. Don't test something come race day. When, when I do a big challenge, I've learned in the past, man, you're going to get crucified if, if you don't do what you say you're going to do. And so you, you better have lined things up and hopefully you have them right. Because when, when it's go time, it, it's, it's not a time to, to find out right? You want to find out during preparation and then you'll find out what you're made of come, come test time. But you know, and, and that, that, that's where you have to elevate your, your mental game and your, your physical game. But to that point, you have to f have done enough work, tested enough things that on the start line on day one, you're, you're 300% confident. Now, nothing, nothing's ever going to go according to plan and you're going to have to adjust and pivot and, and make adjustments. But, but that's, that's given with any big journey, right? But you, you, my advice to everybody is double the length of time that you think it's going to take you to prepare for something. Be patient with it and fail as hard as you can in preparation phase. So when you looked at something like Eco Challenge, which covered what, eight, 10 different disciplines. And from what I could tell from, you know, from, from what we were able to see of your team, you know, you obviously had swimming, running and biking down pat, but when it comes to, uh, you know, long paddle boards or ocean crossings with, with paddling or um, scaling the sides, you know, and repelling the sides of mountains or cold water swims or whatever else it is that you had to face. How did you prepare for all of that stuff and, and 
do you believe that your preparation was, was good enough? You got through it, but, but was your preparation strong enough? Yeah. I mean, we did the best we could with the time frame that we were given. I mean, you, you get accepted onto something like that and you have six months and then they don't tell you how long you're going to do something. They just tell you, Hey, be proficient in this modality. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we had to learn swift water, white water. We had to learn ocean sailing. We had to learn navigation. We had to learn so, uh, ropes ascending, descending. Uh, there were so many things I had never done before. Um, did we prepare ourselves proficiently to be patient and get through the race? Yes. Did we have enough time to race the race? No. And that's what I'm talking about, having the right expectations and and um, adjusting your goals for what's realistic in the time frame that you're given. And also respecting those that go before you. I, I, I'm not naive to the fact that these pro teams have been doing this for 20 years and are as a cohesive unit and are navigational specialists. Um, we sucked at navigating. We'd never done it before. Um, I'd never sailed before. How, how am I expected to compete with guys that have been doing it for 20 years? And so going into anything, know your role and curb your expectations based on what the reality is and check, check your ego. Like I, I knew my role and we, we were flat out told we weren't going to finish that race. I, I wasn't naive to <laughs> think I was going to compete at the front end of this thing. Um, we did the best we could given who we were as a team and what our past experiences were. We were so flat out told we weren't going to finish who's, this race. Who's telling you that that like like past past um, people, coaches? Who's telling you that you will not get through this? Oh, pr- producers, um, <laughs> other really? other racers, like mid um, race, like just in, you no, know, you, no, you, lead, okay. lead, leading up to it, leading up okay. to it. Yeah, um, you know, we we were we're Team Iron Man. Uh, we, you guys do swim, bike, run. This isn't this isn't what you do. You're way out outside of your league and your comfort zone. And we're like, yeah, we are, but we're here and we're going to give it all we got. And uh, that's what I loved about our, about our you know our team is we we back each other throughout the event. Um, we didn't we didn't quit on each other, and we just kept figuring out a way to keep moving forward. We were very patient. Um, we knew we weren't going to win, and um, we we didn't want to make really bad rookie mistakes and so we were tentative we were cautious um the goal was to cross the finish line and 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 tackle everything that they threw at us and i think we did a great job um doing that now again we've gained knowledge we've gained experience and we're hoping to have a different experience in in patagonia um if we're lucky enough to be accepted uh we'll we'll put we'll take some more risks we will do things differently we learned a ton um, in the back jungle of Fiji. Can, can, can I ask you, so, you know, moving from um, doing a, a marathon to a triathlon seems to me to be a bit of a step up or whatever, moving from one to multiple, moving from, you know, it seems like there's, there are many things we can do where you inch your way up, right? You, you stack success after success, learning after learning and you inch your way up. And then there's other times where, there's no way to try something like you, you do it or you don't do it. And so I imagine like the first time that you did an Ironman, it was not just this little step up. It was like, I do this or I don't do this. When you go to eco challenge, you do it or you don't do it. Very, very hard to be able to um, work your way up to it. Right. So when you find yourself at these, these life moments where you're not doing something slightly harder, you are literally taking this huge leap of faith forward. What are you thinking the night before? What are you thinking the day of? How are you feeling? What, what, what are you doing to get yourself ready for this thing that you've never, you don't even know what to expect in front of you? Yeah, that was the biggest thing is we just had no idea what to expect. Um, it, it, it's like we were uh, an attorney in a courtroom and we were asked to put on scrubs and go do brain surgery. I mean, that, that's just how different of a sport it, it was that we were dabbling in. And, but if you can control your mind and you have a strong mindset, you can apply those principles to anything. And, and the biggest thing you have to, to be able to do is control your thoughts and put all your focus and attention on only the task ahead of you. And, and that, that's where a lot of teams got side rails and even a teammate of ours, they, they kept looking ahead 
and it's called catastrophism. Mm -hmm. You're, you're projecting uh, uh, an event that hasn't happened yet in your life. And you, that's all you can tend to focus on. And now the ego gets involved and you're creating a scenario and having conversations when it hasn't even happened. What, what, why did we shift our focus and attention away from what we're doing right now? Cause now we have to drain energy to, to get you back on track to do what we, to get, keep moving forward. And so that, that's, that's ultimately the, the game plan going into this for, for, for the guys on the team was we, we had to figure out, okay, tomorrow is something that's a new journey. Uh, we've never done this before. Let's keep our spirits up and let's focus on what we're doing right now, because that's what we can control. And if you apply that to every aspect of your life, there's a great book. I can't remember who wrote it, but it's called the one thing. And if everybody focused on the most important thing that moves the needle for progress, uh, progress, you win, like you, you win and you gain experience on that winning journey. And so everybody needs to put on horse blinders in life and realize the moment you're in right now, because that's the only thing you can control. Why are we so focused about this over here and this over there that we can't control and an event in the future that hasn't even happened yet? You can prepare yourself for it, but why are we putting negative energy and worry into an event that we don't truly know the components or elements of it? Do you find just yourself, do you, do you find so, to be someone who is very comfortable living in the present or do you find yourself more future focused or past focused? Um, I think everybody worries about the future. I think everybody um, dwells too much on the past and, and most people need to be more present. And so it, it's human nature to do those things and it takes practice to, to develop those habits to, okay, the past is the past. I've learned those lessons. I'm going to apply it to today. The future's not guaranteed. I need to plan for it, but not worry about it. And I need to be right here right now. And so when, when you're doing these types of um, endeavors, ventures, whatever you want to call it, if something's going to get you, what, what is the thing that's going to get you? Our, our, I mean, we're our own worst enemies. If you're going to get God, it's you. Um, but, but it's not going to be your body failing you. It's, it, is, is it? Is, is it going to be, um, you know, so like you, you told the story on, the, on, on TEDx, right, about just crushing it. And this is years ago now, if your daughter's 18, you know, this is years ago, you know, just crushing it and getting to the point where you're like, I can't, I can't complete this with whatever it is, six or eight miles ahead of you on a bike ride. And yet, you know, your daughter says, if you can crawl, you can do it. If you can cartwheel, you can do it. Um, and so you're able to get, get through it, but Here's guess, the reality. I guess we end up talking in these general, like I, I, lo I love speaking with, with people like you, but I only get a small window yeah. and, I, and, and we speak in these generalities and it's just like, I want to, I want to know the thing that if something's going to get James, what is the thing that's going to do it? And then how do you crush that thing? How do you be, be yeah, the, the, thing, out the, of thing, the thing that's going to get anybody is lack of preparation and non-belief in yourself. Because, because if, if you've done the work, if you, if you believe in yourself, you've done the work and you're showing up ready, um, nothing can stop you at, at a certain point in time. It's just a choice. Mm -hmm. And when, when you're, when your body is aching or ailing or um, backed against the wall, those next steps are the most important ones. Cause that's when your body adapts and says, Oh, okay, this is the new normal. He's not going to quit. Cause when, when your body speaks and, and you give into that, then your body goes, okay, all I got to do is like twinge and he'll quit on me. Um, but if you teach it to, and, and don't allow it to dictate how it's going to go, your, body, your mind and your body come into unison at a certain point in time. And what's crazy is my last 20 Ironmans of the 50 were the fastest because my mind and body got onto the same page and my body finally said, okay, he's serious. He's going to do all 50. I better, I better, I, I have to figure out how to repair because he's going to show up and he's going to start. And it's amazing to watch that. And that's what the reason most people quit is because they think they've reached a limit, but they're not taking the next step to allow their body to adapt and evolve so that they can continue to be that new normal. And I mean, you, you take, you take a prisoner of war, you take a concentration camp person. Um, why is it they're able to continue to endure 
for insane amounts of time, um, one, they have to have the hope. Um, I mean, Viktor Frankl's The Man's Search for Meaning, what an unbelievable read. Um, why was he able, against all odds, to be able to continue on for such a long period of time? It was because of his mindset. He wasn't going to be broken. And it's amazing what the mind and the body uh, or the body can endure when the mind makes a decision that this is how it is. And, 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 and like I said, most people just quit on themselves. And, and in that, in that book, I mean, he could see when someone was on their way out and he could tell the moment they, he, that that person gave up mentally and then the body was quick to follow. When, you, you know, I, I read when I was reading up on you, I read that when you decided to do the, the 50, 50, 50, that um, I imagine like many things that you decided to do, there was a lot of skepticism and doubt um, uh, when I speak to other athletes, especially endurance athletes, uh, you know, people always talk about the like, why are you putting your body through this? You know, like you're, you're going to regret this when you're 60, when your knees give out, um, like just this doubt, this, this, this faux concern, this, this, um, you know, people wanting to stop you from pursuing the things that you're doing. Um, how do you, I mean, you've talked about blinders, but how do you, put that aside how does that not creep in how does the little voices not creep in when when everyone around you is saying why are you doing this yeah i mean i i do it because of the the impact that we have on people i know that i know i know we change lives i know we we've helped people overcome uh depression and alcoholism and drug abuse and i i i'll, I'll, I'll endless amounts of messages and emails. It's, it's so humbling. That's why I keep continuing to do it. Um, and ultimately we, I love it. I mean, it's a, it's a friggin' blast. It's an adventure. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. And I just watched my father-in-law have a double knee replacement and he's out skiing. So we live in a day and age where I can, I can fix busted out blown knees, but I, I also don't buy into the belief that that's happening. I take care of my body. I do the right amounts of rest. People are seeing the, the, the small window in time that we do an intense physical challenge. I mean, that was 50 days in, of my life. Um, I'm very good uh, around the clock about my nutrition, my therapy, my conditioning, my strength. I mean, all of it. Um, people see, it, and, and it's, the, it's the worst thing anybody can do is take a moment in someone's life and do a wide paintbrush stroke that that's, 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 defines that person mm -hmm. and no single moment in time defines anybody and yeah was the 50 hard on my body absolutely if i continued to do it would have i done long-term damage probably but did i no because i did a lot of right things leading up to it i did a lot of the right things during it i did a lot of right things after it i continue to do a lot of right things um based on what i've done and the, the people's opinion that don't know I should be dead and, and crippled by this point. Dude, I'm, I'm almost 45 years old. I'm healthy as, as I've ever been um, looking forward and trying to crush more records. And so dude, tomorrow's not guaranteed. Um, do I said it right at the beginning, the secret to success is doing a lot of little things consistently over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. Do the little things and you're not going to have big, big problems. Do the small things right. That's what you say, right? Yeah. Yeah. What's your relationship to fear? Um, because it, it doesn't sound like let's, let's take, let's take this one event that you've done and paint your whole life with it. But you don't, you don't come across as a fearful person. Uh, I mean, human nature uh, has fear. Uh, I, I, I believe fear is learned though. Uh, fear is just an emotion. Um, you, you have to have a conversation with yourself. Why am I scared of that? And to overcome it, you break it down into smaller manageable pieces you experience wins and that's no longer scary. Um, fear is an irrational thought um, based off of a past belief and experience that we've had. Well, change that belief that you have about something and try to overcome that. Um, you're choosing to be fearful of something because you lack understanding of what it truly is. What are you really afraid of? What's the circumstances that are surrounding the fear that you're feeling? Fear is just an emotion. Mm -hmm. And if we can control our happiness emotion, our sad emotion, well, let's figure out how to control our fear emotion. 
but most people aren't willing to break that down and put the effort that it takes to figure that out. Again, it's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. That's what this podcast should be called. It's a choice. It's a choice. It's, it's, it's a called, choice. We do hard things because we do hard things um, because it's a choice. <laughs> well, I tell my son that now, but um, I, I wasn't someone who, you know, who, who, who faced a lot. I, I've done a lot of weird and crazy things mm-hmm. um, that I only realize are weird and crazy when someone's like, Oh, you did that. And it's like, yeah, why not? Like just whatever, like, you know, you just start and do it. And if you mess it up, you call someone who knows what they're doing and they fix it for you. You yeah. know, and if you don't mess it up ta da! you just figured out how to do something you didn't know how to do. Um, and so I have this weird mix of extreme confidence in some things and a total lack of confidence in others, but Lack of confidence isn't a fear, though. Um, so so the, the lack of confidence comes from, I think most people don't do new things or try new things because they think they're going to do it wrong. They think they're going to mess something up so much that, it's, that's, that it's, um, it cannot be repaired. Um, you know, like I've, I, I've, I've, in my effort to try and do something new, I went ahead and made it so much worse that it can't even be saved. Um, you know, and whether this is relationship or career or just fixing something in your house, even, you know, um, and I think a lot of that stems from, uh, from fear, or from um, a lack of confidence or, um, yeah, doubt. Do you not agree? Yeah. I mean, f- fear stems from um, perceived reactions we're going to get from others. Again, it's catastrophism. It's thinking ahead about an outcome that hasn't happened yet. Um, and an emotion that we're, we are lacking control over. Mm-hmm. We need to stop caring about what anybody thinks. <laughs> if you, if you can do that, teach me how. <laughs> it's a choice. <laughs> it's a choice. It's all a choice. I love it. I love it. Choose. It's a choice. Uh, so if, if you're thinking back, if you're comfortable sharing and, and, it, and it certainly doesn't have to get too deep, too dark, too personal, but, but what, what's the hardest thing that you've attacked and, and overcome? Cause I'm curious if it's actually something even related to athletics or if it's like, it, it, it's not, I think the, I think the hardest or whatever it might be. Yeah. I, I, I was, that's what I was going to say. I think the hardest thing is um, overcoming the, the fear of, of being a, being a bad dad. Uh, or spouse. I, I think, I think the family unit is, is the most important thing. Um, and, and trying to get that right is, is important. Um, getting that wrong is, is probably a fear of mine. Um, losing the relationship with my daughters, um, getting that wrong would be catastrophic. Um, dude, screwing up and making mistakes on the 50 and things that we do and choices we make and right, wrong, or indifferent in the moment, other people's opinions who cares like that that doesn't define me as a as a person and a human being i show up every single day i try to be the best i can now if i screw up my relationship with my kids and my wife and and make poor decisions and that well that's that's catastrophic so what's next for you then you 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 mentioned you mentioned uh patagonia uh and that application but but you mentioned the ride (laughs) the ride tomorrow, but, but what's, what's the next challenge if, if you're progressing? I mean, where is there to go when you've done all the things that you've done? Um, yeah, we got ex- some exciting stuff for 2021. Um, in two weeks, though, I'm doing a, we're trying to break the course record in a, a race called Uberman. Um, our, we're doing it as a relay. Our swimmer is going to swim 22 miles from Catalina Island to the California coast. I'm, I'm going to do the 400 mile bike leg um, from, from the, the coastal area to the start of the bad water, 135 run. And then our runner is going to run 135 miles through death Valley from the lowest part of uh, California up Mount Whitney. Um, and so that's in two weeks. That's what I'm preparing for uh, leading into next year, hopefully Patagonia Eco, uh, world's toughest race. And then um, in May, I'd like to do the Epic Deca, which is 10 Ironmans in Hawaii. And then I'd like to, uh, we have a team put together and we're going to do Ram, which is race across America. So we're just going to kick, it. we're going to, we're going to kick off the first and second quarter with uh, a couple 
couple couple course records and some big challenges and then there's a there's a treat for the back half of 2021 that i'm not going to announce yet you don't have to announce anything but do you ever do you ever worry about running out of challenges in front of you dude or? there's so much um variety out there and and and, and challenges doesn't have to be in the same space um you could take entrepreneurship as a, as a as a challenge you could take uh, brand building as a challenge you could take charity work as a challenge you could take um working on your relationship as a challenge what's next doesn't have to be in the same physical realm to me i think mental training and doing things that make you feel uncomfortable is the pushing the boundary it does i Dude, you can give me any any physical challenge, and I'll prepare for it, and I'll go conquer it. I'm not worried about that. Um, but there's other areas of my life, like I had to learn how to be a very uh, proficient and impactful uh, public speaker. Mm -hmm. um, everybody always said after the 50, what's next? And for five years, I really worked on my craft at being the best speaker in the world. And I mean, I've spoken in 48 countries, and and you you name the company and i've been able to to present and have impact with them and to me that's what was next that's what was challenging that's what was pushing my envelope and so there's just so many cool adventures cool challenges um that will push an individual physically and mentally um and more hopefully mentally than than physically because that's that's what's going to take us into you know long into our lives uh, is one, yeah, we have to stay physically healthy, but our mindset and continuing to push that Alzheimer's is a real thing and it, and it, it cripples people. And if you, I mean, what a touching story on the world's touch us race with Mason, his father and whatnot, and the whole thing. And we lived with a lady that had Alzheimer's and cared for her for two years. Um, the, 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 the need and necessity to keep your mind sharp, it, it can, can hopefully help and prolong something like that. Um, it's not a cure-all, obviously, um, and things happen. Um, but the the more chance that we can give ourselves at being mentally sharp is by doing hard mental physical challenges. Oh, <laughs> wasn't that a fantastic episode? I mean, James's story, like what he does and how hard he pushes and how he really goes after things, I find super, super inspiring. It raises the bar to what is possible for me and for, I imagine, for you as well. So key takeaways for me. One, hard prep is key to success. Number two, success equals a lot of little things along the way. And number three, choose, choose, make the choice not to care about what other people say about you. Of course, all of these tips, all of these tactics, all of this stuff only helps if you actually put these things into practice. I want to remind you that you can rate and review this podcast on Apple Podcasts. It would mean the world to me. If you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe already. And if you want to connect with me directly, reach out to me on IG, drop me a DM, we can chat. Remember, those of us who have something to prove can show the world and ourselves that we have what it takes to make it happen. But to do so, you have to think big. You've got to be bold and then you must say yes.